from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in London, England for kind of the wrap up here for HP Discover uh, 2015. HPE is now the HP Enterprise. The first show takes place in Europe actually for, by all coincidences. It's the first show of the new split company, officially split. This is our third day and wrap up of the three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante and our special guest on this segment is Calvin Zito, influential blogger, HPE storage guy, his handle Calvin Zito on Twitter, um, always, doing the, always doing God's work out on the trenches, blog posts, social media, great to see you back on Community, the Community, and sometimes they have me doing branding stuff, John, so I have to correct you, it's not HP Enterprise. Did you do what the do logo? I get? Do I get to get Meg over here Did and correct you? Did you do the logo? Uh, yeah. What is it called then? <laughs> well, it's, it's always, this is funny. You know, branding people are branding people, yeah, they so. Are. Hopefully none of them are watching now, but. They will watch, they, though. They, they've actually sent, uh, you know, when we first split, the register did a story, and it said HP Enterprise, and they got a, a letter from Hewlett Packard Enterprise saying this is an incorrect usage of the name. There's only two correct uses, uh, usages, and it's either HPE, which is not preferred, it's the short form, or it's Hewlett Packard Enterprise and it says you should absolutely never use HP Enterprise. Everyone's going to do that. That's right, that's, that's like what everybody said. Everybody's going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I like Hewlett Packard, I mean, it's the roots of the company. I have no complaints about mouthful. But the PR people probably aren't going to like you too much if you keep saying <laughs> HP Enterprise, I'm just telling you. So I wrote a blog post uh, last <laughs> night, the, the new HP, and, and I had um, someone put the logo in on our blogging team, and it was the old logo. I'm like, guys, you also go in and change the logo. But they got caught into the RSS feeds, so on all the shares, LinkedIn and Twitch going crazy, it's sharing with the old logo. Oops. <laughs> the oh, brand police no. are going to go crazy. <laughs> but the branding is pretty good. I like it, the green logo. Oh, yeah. Some are calling it the green coffin. Um, and, but and it works. I like it a lot. I do like it. It's grown on me. I like how they've used the elements. Love how they're using photography. Yeah. Images are beautiful. Great, great branding. You good know, when they, first, they, when they first showed it to employees, it was actually before the Discover we did, the HP Discover we did, they showed it to us internally on a forum, and it was just basically the, the, the element with the brand Hewlett Packard Enterprise. It wasn't the usage of it, yeah. and there was actually a forum that was online where 95% of the comments, actually 99.9, .9, were, you know, WTF. I mean, really? Who, what, I, I how much honest. did we pay for a rectangle? That was my reaction, but I'm getting it now. You, but, know, but you walk around exactly here, it. you see the way Simplicity. the element's being, your fire going through it. Yeah. I clicked on a, on a on a video, it opened up in the element. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And and just, so did we're you guys see, see it the open of the keynote? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, then, and the way yeah. they used it in the yeah. background with the symphony yeah, playing, I mean, that was just like, why? I, so everybody. there's a lot you can do with that. It's simple, squares are easy to use, and it's flat, right. it works well on mobile, so. Yeah. So guys, I want to introduce this last this segment. This is a new format for theCUBE. This uh -oh. is a, uh, a wrap up, kind of bringing both worlds together <laughs> for a unified analysis. Um, Dave and I get to sit down with the executives and customers, talk about um, you know, the stuff, strategy, what's going on. We ask wild ass questions sometimes. Uh, well, I do, Dave doesn't. Um, Calvin's also doing the same thing with all the influencers and bloggers. We're all talking kind of the same people, getting different perspectives. So I thought it'd be great if we just share perspectives. Sure just kind of talked randomly around what we've seen, what we've heard, observations, anecdotes. Sure. Um, I'll start. Um, Calvin, I just think that it's just a good vibe this year. The energy around not having a floor that's laid out like an org chart. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's solutions, yeah. right? E-government, you're seeing, you know, IOT, not, you know, the Vertica booth, or the, the storage idle, booth. idle booth, or store, well, I mean, it's, you know, but it's all blended in, so I thought that was key. I liked Meg Whitman's opening keynote when she said, she, I, and I love when CEOs do this, and more than ever now for HP, uh, Enterprise, is, you look back at Enterprise, she thanked the customers. Thank you for your business. You can't do enough by saying thank you for your business. So you know, those two things jumped out, kind of paraphrased the whole thing. And then the composable thing and the synergy, I think, is the next equivalent converged infrastructure. And I think that is going to be a head scratcher for some, the DevOps guys like us can see it right away, Docker and all this stuff kind of playing out, but HP had converged infrastructure right from day one. People scratched their heads, it took a few years, but it's mainstream. I think the same thing's going to happen. So that's my big takeaway. 
thoughts on your end? Yeah, you know, the, I, th I totally agree in terms of the floor layout. I think the one thing that's a little bit of a problem that customers have found, there are customers that come and they want to go talk to the product guys. And so I actually found a customer wandering around on the, on the floor with one of the, the, the or, event organizers who we had a customer trying to find store once. And they're sitting there like, where do I find store once? And I knew where it was, so I took them right over to it. And then I pulled the person aside and said, you know what, you, what I probably need to do is at least in the directory, tell people where the product stuff is, because they don't even do that. I mean, it's all organized by the solutions. Yeah, and good point. So the customer couldn't find store once and they wanted to go talk to a store once customer. So I love the fact that there's a, now a solution focus. Yeah. And it's not the product stacks and... But they do need some navigation discovery. They need navigation. Yeah. Dave, what's your thoughts? Well, you know, I've been talking about it all week. I mean, I hate to sound like a broken record, but to me, the, the balance sheet changes everything. You got a cleaned up balance sheet, you got no debt. What do you mean debt. by that? You've been mentioning this, okay. I want to expand on this. So, HP, I asked Meg Whitman, I want to say three years ago, one of the analyst meetings, in public, you know, you asked the question. Yeah, yeah. I asked her, and I knew, you always and, do that. And, I, and I tried to put her on the spot, I said, what's, what's the balance between organic growth and R&D, uh, or inorganic growth, you know, acquisitions and R&D, and what do you think is a better investment? Knowing that they had this big chunk of debt on the balance sheet, and her answer was, we're not going to do any M&A until we clean up the balance sheet. So then I asked George Kadifa, Meg just said, she, you know, she's doing any M&A. You've got a Good software analyst. business Detective that's now work. shackled. <laughs> and he just rolled his eyes like, oh, there's another analyst question. But, it, but the point was HP had, didn't have the flexibility Yeah, we, yeah, we get time. that. Okay, yeah. now what's happened is HP, uh, yeah. Hewlett Packard Inc., well HP before they split, took a $14.5 billion note, restructured the debt, put most of the debt under HP Inc., which has the cash flow to pay off, service that debt, cleaned up the HPE balance sheet, there's no debt on it anymore, delevered, and now HPE can go out and make acquisitions. So HP Inc. is the Cayman so, Islands for the transaction. Yeah, it's, it's like I've been saying. Ring. So this is like, to it's me, a, it's been <laughs> rope-a-dope for three years. So they're clean, they have Muhammad no Muhammad Ali on the ropes, and now it's the seventh round, and HP can come out fighting. It's got all this energy, it's got a cleaned up balance sheet, it can make acquisitions if it needs to, which it will, it's obviously oh. Aruba is one. And so, internally, that's got to be a breath of fresh air. Yeah, and I mean, and I maybe didn't uh, have the, the depth of your analysis there, Dave, but I kind of knew it was about, you know, to reduce the debt and put Hewlett Packard Enterprise in a position that, Solid you know, footing. Yeah, I mean, it, and yeah. enterprise is changing fast, and maybe consumers is too. I don't know their business, so I won't speak to theirs, but I think Meg was really trying to put enterprise in a place where if we needed to acquire, we could. There's certainly organic stuff happening. I'm sure yeah. you guys have seen the machine. I actually just did some videos with folks over there. I mean, I'm blown away by some of the stuff that's coming, and it's, you know, we'll be here, they said, by the end of the decade. Very cool stuff they're doing. So. I feel Innovation like, is so alive, but I, I feel like in a way the deck is stacked. I mean, I've done a lot of small P and L management, and when you do, you know, changes, you can say, "I want this division to succeed, and I'm going to set it up for success." Boom. Funding. And I think that's yeah. what's happened with HP. Yeah, and that's cloud. Obviously, cloud's in the center of that. Storage yeah. is a big. The converged stuff's all coming right as they had planned years ago. It's been fun as doing the cube now for six years, seeing all the converged infrastructure stories, talking to all the execs. A lot have left, most have stayed, but seeing that they stayed on track, Dave. They didn't waver, and they added new stuff to it. So. All that distraction, all that noise, they did good. I stayed on the course. So, so I, I love that. And it's, it's good to see the people get the reward now. They're unshackled with a clean balance sheet. But I'm cons I want to ask more deeper, Calvin, from your bloggers and the influencers out there, what are they hearing? What's the vibe? What are they taking note of? What are, what's the hallway conversation like? I mean, they don't like? pull punches. They no. want to see growth. Yeah. What's the community right. well, talking about? The, the, the vibe you get from a blogger depends on their perspective. And you guys know this. I mean, some of them <laughs> tend to come in with a very sarcastic, you know, these guys can't do anything right, attitude. And those are the guys that you want to see how's their attitude going to be when they leave, when they really understand what you're doing. <laughs> it's a bellwether. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, there's, again, get back to like the corporate people. Sometimes they don't like those people because they tend to be snarky and they'll tweet snarky but stuff But you on like Twitter. the skeptics. Yeah, I want to know what it is. I want to know what it is. They'll give you a fair, wrong. honest interpretation. So, you know, Composable is one of them. I th and maybe I don't think we've sold everybody, but a couple of them were really questioning Composable. And it's like, sounds, good, but you know, three years from now, it's going to be something else. And you guys have, you're, it's, you know, what you're investing now in Composable isn't going to be there. I don't know. I, I think what customers are looking for is make the infrastructure disappear, uh, automate and instrument everything that, that we do. Definitely are looking for that. I mean, we've done so many cube gigs, <clears throat> it's no brainer. Like, they all want DevOps. It's just, it's too hard as hell to do it. Well, right. the you machine know? and Memristor are fundamental right. to the future 
of composable, right, as we saw it. And so, it, it, and you put an R&D there, so you're making your bet, placing your chips on the table. If those things fly, you know, synergy's going to fly. Well, we had Rick yeah. Lewis on theCUBE, and he was, we, we actually forced him to say it. <laughs> yeah. is, it? is Synergy is it? <laughs> the, not forced him, but we kind of like prodded oh, him. Oh, oh, oh. You asked him the question, is Synergy the first, first kind of peak right? at uh, Memmister and the machine? When he started, well, well you know, uh, mess, went right into messaging. <laughs> and like, well, yes or no? <laughs> okay, well, yes. Well, it is. <laughs> it is. Right, architecturally, yeah, so you, could, any, you know, if you look in there, it is. Well, so and Paul's in HP's core. That's, but that's great because you're seeing, what's the big criticism of the herd years where R&D gets squeezed, we're seeing no more invent. HP's back to its roots of invention. Yeah. And you got to complement that with M&A, which is why I think the balance well, Calvin, you, so are, you are privy to the CI um, launches, right? When Converge Infrastructure first oh, yeah. came out. What was the reaction to that? Um, How about the same, right? Skeptics come, ah, Yeah, the... always, always were. And I think, you know, the, you guys know this. I mean, HP was probably first out there talking about Converge they were first. Infrastructure. They were first. But well, Teradata there, was really there, first. There they didn't talk about it in that those terms, but anyway. And, and when there was, <laughs> unfortunately, at, at that time, there was just a lot of I, <laughs> a marketing message behind it, and it took a lot of time for there to get to be traction where we actually had something, and you know what happened. I mean, yeah. other people stepped in, and they became the thought leaders around well, converged infrastructure. And that's why people said, okay, Synergy, you know, copycat to UCS, IBM did this three years ago. Well, give us your perspective on why uh, that's I, not the I case. I totally disagree, because we actually, uh, I'll give an example. No, that's we what started talking saying, about Composable yeah. at Discover uh, in Vegas in, in a couple few, few months ago, yeah. and suddenly we started noticing Cisco started also talking about Composable. The way they talked about it is completely different. <clears throat> uh, maybe what they're trying to do is make it sound like it's UCS. It's not, I mean, I, there's, I don't think there's a comparison. Well, there's no storage in Cisco, so it's, it can't be built from the right, ground Right, and how do, you, how do you orchestrate and compose, you know, how do you, how do you fire up a container by having a, somebody just go in and grab from a pool of resources and you know, a couple minutes later they're, they've got a container and, and they and can start doing stuff. And IBM it. with Pure conceptually probably could have done it, but it chose not to. It chose to focus on that application layer yeah. and not deal with the infrastructure piece that you and guys have as a pool, which uh, you guys have done. And that may not be a bad thing for them, right. but I think for, for our perspective, I think we, we want to own the infrastructure and then the APIs, they're going to be open APIs to be able to manage that stuff. I, I think we're in a great position to kick, and, kick butt. And Oracle's choosing to optimize its stack. Okay, and that's One what I'm stack. saying. That's I, great for Oracle. And I don't stack. think it's a zero sum game. I think Oracle can do well. I think HP can do well. IBM's buying the weather <laughs> company. I think they've got a different strategy here. Dell EMC, we'll see. I mean, I mean what's your take on that? Well, I think it's going to be an interesting um, thing. Obviously, it's going to create a lot of confusion in the near term. For me, it gets down to the economics of it that, again, you guys probably know way more about that than I do, but to me it's like, okay, D Dell is needed a storage business. I mean, they were okay, but they really didn't have a compelling storage vision or storage direction. EMC needed servers, and they needed to be able to have that whole infrastructure to be able to do that real end to end, because you know, UCS and Cisco relationship was obviously burning up quickly. So I, I think it's a good fit of together the question is, price. was it worth the price? Well, and that's the question and that I HP's $28 billion market cap, Dave and I were joking, why doesn't Dell just buy <laughs> HP? It's half the price, they got all the action. HPE, HPE. HPE. Yeah, there you go, so, I'm, I'm, where's Mac? I got to get Mac in here. <laughs> so, I, so, yeah, right. Well, the other thing too is EMC needed a way to survive in a world that's not going to support 60 plus percent gross margins. Right, that, those days are gone well, for storage. And, and some people I've heard say it's, it's a way for EMC to go private because now they don't have to like right. uh, well, answer yeah. to Wall Street because of the, because of the gross so. margins. Because in the cash flow is doing this, the margins are getting squeezed. So Calvin, talk about yeah. the um, European show here. Obviously it's not in the US. Um, um, we noticed we get the new Cube gems. You probably saw some of the Cube gems we've been putting out, yep. the real-time highlights. The Cube is trending. Not a lot of Twitter action in Europe. There's a social media dynamic that's different it's What's a, your it's, observation on the social media front here in Europe? It, it's definitely a, a bit different, but it's... Um, Europeans it, don't tweet as much as Americans. They don't or do as they? much. Well, I haven't, I haven't seen the, the absolute metrics, but you know, we put all these leaderboards out and it looks like the volume is pretty similar. I mean, Hans I see tweets. a lot of action. I, mean, you know. um, I don't have absolute numbers. <laughs> We're going to have Bake Off, all the Americans versus the Europeans. Hans tweets more than Fosquette. I mean, it's <laughs> he's, a, he's a tweeting machine. <laughs> well, we've got the, we a couple of Belgian guys here because we're just kind of measuring the, the influencers and there's you know, a board up there, of course, you know, let's yeah. create some healthy competition. <laughs> And there's these two Belgians that you know you look every minute and it's somebody else who's at the top yeah, of the leaderboard. You're up there with Bert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> the, um, the content's been awesome. How about uh, some of the social content? Have you been, been yeah, hearing Yeah, you know, honestly, things? this stuff gets to be so busy. I was telling somebody the other day, and you know, what's, what's the show been? I got here, I left Sunday to get here. I've had nine hours sleep since I got here. So <laughs> I, there hasn't been time for me to read stuff, but you know, the, the bloggers who are doing things have told me, I'll spend you know, next week really kind of chewing down on what they've done. Um, I mean, we keep doing this because we get great stuff from What's your take on the bloggers? social in general? Obviously the transition, a lot of people had split up with social's a very unified group, I know, at HP. Did people split groups? What you happened know, with the social? Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to be entirely, entirely accurate with this, but I think I am, is that a lot of the social team came with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I mean, the stuff that we always did at, at Discover events in the past, the people all in that room down there, it's all yeah. the same people that did Discover yeah. in the years past. Some of the corporate level people, there's a few of those that got peeled off, but again, I mean, you guys yeah. know the, the, fine, the, the books part of it, they don't have as much uh, you know, uh, bandwidth to have the size of teams that, that we have. So I think a lot of the, like, the people doing social media actually came over to Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Well, what should we be doing? What should you be yeah. doing? In social, and research, in the cube, what, sh what area you, should we be covering? What gap should we be filling in your view? Um, you know, you guys got a, a great gig going because you bring the insight that you have. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm probably not the right guy to give you free consulting right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm not because, I mean, you guys got a great gig because you really bring that insight to, to industry events like this and you're able to, uh, like you said, boil down the, extract the signal from the noise. Or, yeah. and, you guys got a great gig, so I'm, I'm not sure yeah. I could give you anything to do to change how well, you Well, I think, Dave, I, I, can, I can answer that. Um, uh, at least my perspective is. And, and well, we know what, you can answer, well, John. No, well, this is why I wanted Calvin to come on this show. Uh, so we talked about last night. You invited him, like, would be great. We've never done a wrap and brought the two perspectives together because we're both doing the same job, basically. Yeah. Scouring the landscape, extracting the signal from the noise, but just different formats, right? The bloggers are in the trenches, they're doing the one-on-ones, they're sniffing for stories. Stu and trying. Gracely are tied more into that. And Stu Miniman crosses that on our team, yeah. right? You know that, right? So so what wrap up, the great wrap up here is, hey, what do we, compare notes. So I think unifying social, because social's collaborative. I mean, and I don't know what the answer is, what that collaboration is, but to me, the best social media that I've seen done has always had one common, two common elements, collaboration and people. Yeah. Done well, those are the two vectors of dynamics. So good people, good collaboration, magic happens. And, and maybe know? I'm reading too much, this is maybe a trend that's maybe different than what you guys are asking, but I think something that I see happening is marketing is almost in a way, you know, the, the, the marketing yeah. out's out, it's becoming social. And companies that don't recognize is that that's what they need to do the customers are looking for that one-to-one -one yeah. interaction. They don't want to go to your website and read a data sheet. They're, they're out there in social media. They're I, sourcing I think and discovering information from their peers. Yeah. And they're reading sources that they trust, Absolutely. which is the earned media, right? Yeah. That's our, all right, Calvin, any final thoughts? The parties, give us a take. The storage party was fantastic. <laughs> oh, Obviously, well, my, my birthday, I was very happy that you guys organized your yeah, party happy 50th, around by the way. my birthday. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. 225s, I said, if I could split. The storage party, and yeah, there would be, we all would be two 25 year olds. Yeah, exactly. But the, the storage party With a good was balance great. Sheet. The storage party was great. The only problem was is usually, you know, a lot of the, the, the women that work for storage were left back in the US this time. There were just too many guys there. there so just, yeah. I don't know. I, w I was getting tired against rubbing up against people trying to get through, and every time it was a guy. So uh, we got to fix Those that ratio next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Calvin, great to have you on the wrap. Um, this is a wrap up from day three. Calvin Zito, he's with us from, okay, no, just Dave Vellante, my co host. Three days, Dave, great job, Calvin. Great team, job. thanks for everyone's support. Great Camera job. guys, Dan, Leonard, Greg, team, and all the folks back at the ranch live blogging. On the time zone, Jeff Frick, Patrick, uh, pulling all nighters, getting the cube gems out. Good job, well done. Great job, and uh, awesome event. Thanks for thanks for sharing. This is Silicon Angle. Bert Lattimore yeah. on the number one on the leaderboard. <laughs> Bert, good job. If you if you didn't pass out with fatigue, <laughs> you're watching. Congratulations for being number one on the leaderboard. And everyone else, uh, thanks for watching. This is a wrap from Silicon Angle the Cube live from London. That's a wrap for HPE Discover. Thanks for watching. <laughs>